Yeah, I talked the phone. I talked the phone. Like, I talked the phone. Like, I've been on bro. Like, he had in FaceTime. Like, yo, what's up? What's Quay? Like, what the hell? I don't know Quay on the phone saying something. Like, I don't know if he on shit. Like, he told real. Like, and tell Quay to get that and get his lawyer, bro. We did that shit for him. He paid. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was that was um phone call me. He like bro, tell him to chill out, man. Uh, yeah, then we have down the stairs. He was like, he was like, yeah, they was on the cell phone. I ain't even say nothing. So I'm like, I know I ain't even go there. Can you play just maybe the last 30 seconds again? Yeah, I don't know, Clay, on the phone, saying something. Like, I don't know if he on shit, like, he told real, like, and tell Buddy got and get his lawyer, bro. We did that shit for him. He paid, he, you know what I'm saying? What? Yeah, that was, that was, um, phone call. Keep, keep going, keep going. He like, bro, tell him to chill out, man. Uh, yeah, then we have down the stairs. He was like, he was like, yeah, they was on the cell phone. I ain't even say nothing. So I'm like, I know I ain't even go there. I'm like, I ain't got access to no phone. Hell yeah, nah, hell, we ain't one there like that. I don't, I don't think he's saying no shit like that, though. Yeah. But then, I thought, what, that was right. like, what the hell is he saying? Going for me. Okay, thank you. So, Your Honor, mm -hmm. our position is that what he is pushing back against, and it's the context of that statement that is the most important, because they're trying to tell, um, they're trying to relay to keep someone calm and that they were um, talking to Onfon, who is a was a co is a co defendant who pled guilty in this case, and they are um, alarmed at the fact that another member is potentially on a jail call saying that we did that for Bruh, and that's the point at which Shannon is pushing back, saying like, "What? Right. Like, I can't believe that." And then he's like, nah, you know, he, 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 he couldn't, have, he didn't do that. And the other guy says, you know, I don't know. He could have been on a cell phone or what, but that's what I heard him say. So his alarm isn't at, he's lying on me. His alarm is that, and this is what we would argue. Of course, anyone can make their own arguments at trial, but we believe that this is what the evidence shows that the alarm is at the fact that this person on a jail phone is saying something highly incriminating to them and sharing this information between them all. It, and the alarm in itself is evidence of the fact that this whole conversation is in furtherance of that conspiracy, which is the enterprise that is YSL and the criminal street gang activity of YSL. So none of it is hearsay when all of it is statements of a co-conspirator. It is their reaction to their it's belief. It's still hearsay, even if it's a statement of a co-conspirator. So, I mean, at some point, y'all are saying, this isn't hearsay because we're not offering it for the truth. So I know that's sorry, not what you was, meant, but I'm let's sorry. try to keep the terminology clear. Right. You're right. You're very, very right. And I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just want to make clear, like, you know, we, got, right. we have important. got to all be clear about what we are saying and what we mean by what we're saying. Your Honor is... Absolutely right. All right. Um, and so that is, we are saying that it is, there is an exception. Right. And that this is the exception that it falls under. Okay. All right. And so again, I. Yeah. So we going, we're going to call the judge out on this one because she dropped the ball yesterday. Check this out. It's like she dropped the ball a couple of times, but I want to point this one out and then tomorrow we'll have another one. And your honor, the state feels. But said it to Rel. Not it doesn't fall. matter who he said it to. But it sounds like Funk heard it regardless. No. Do I have that part wrong? I think you do because okay. he said it to Rel. Rel said it to somebody else. Nichols said it to Rel. Well, allegedly. allegedly. Allegedly, I understand. Yes, yes. And then Rel to Funk, oh, then Funk to Garlington. 
So that's four layers at least. So, Your Honor, two things is, and the court may just disagree with my argument, which in terms of- What I'd like is some law. Yes, Your Honor. So the case law I was referencing earlier, I will find this date, but it is, there's no double hearsay issue. The statements are admissible without a showing of the declarant's personal knowledge. And I may have been off kilter where I was thinking of, this is what I was thinking of when I referenced to the court, that there's not double hearsay in this statement, is that under, and I will just cite to this motion because the court can read this, and I, okay. but I will find the date. But my, the state's position is that it is co-conspirator, it is in furtherance, like the fact that Garlington is concerned or receives this information, that Nichols made that statement. I understand that part. I That's agree right. with that part. So the colonel, that part in the middle. That... You understand what my concern is, Ms. Love. You seem to understand it before, and I'm sure Mr. Atkins understands it too. He's just too busy looking up the, trying to find the law. That, yeah, that, go ahead. That colonel in the middle, that own folk said, Nichols tells somebody, we did this for bro. Nichols saying, we did this for bro. Nichols saying, we did this for bro. I'll start out by saying, at best or worst, whichever way you want to look at it, Nichols is implicating himself and not Shannon necessarily. He hadn't said Shannon did anything. He's saying, we, me and somebody else did this for bro. So that's to start there as to Mr. Sharp's argument that it necessarily implicates Shannon who has to push back. Number two, own folk being a co-defendant of Mr. Nichols and a co-conspirator of Mr. Nichols relaying what Mr. Nichols told to him, the, whether or not Mr. Nichols said it or not, it's statements that own folk is asserting Mr. Nichols gave to him, even though it's, and it's a statement against the penal interest of Mr. Nichols, the reliability of the statement, the statement itself being the hearsay issue we believe is, is dealt with in that it would be Mr. Nichols, a co-conspirator of own folk relaying something in confidence to own folk or saying something in confidence to somebody else who he considers a person reliable enough to share something that inculpatory with own folk is not trying to harm Mr. Nichols. So he's not going out lying on Mr. Nichols. He's sharing this information in an effort to help Mr. Nichols get him to shut up and stop talking. They all are trying to get him to stop talking. So in terms of the reliability of the information, nobody here has any reason to share inaccurate information. It only furthers their purposes to be truthful about what's happening so that they can further protect themselves and inoculate themselves from any harm coming from this man talking. So the harms and dangers of hearsay that are normally present when, you know, I mean, the whole reason it's kept out is, you know, we don't know if it's true or not are handled and dealt with by the circumstantial, I hate to use this, guarantees of trustworthiness given that are present in the way that this statement comes about. It's told in a way, it's relayed in a way that indicates it's shared in order to, to help not to harm um, Mr. Nichols, to help all of them and keep them safe. So it's layered co-conspirator hearsay, if you will, but that first um, relaying of information, the declarant, Mr. Nichols, saying it to Onfunk, it would be definitely a statement against penal interest. But Mr. Greer, who is Onfunk, sharing that information is a co-conspirator statement, which we believe gets us past this idea that this is here, nested hearsay, nested hearsay. And as far as the 403 argument that is being made, the, in order for it to be so unduly prejudicial as to permit its exclusion, it would have to lure the fact finder into declaring guilt on a ground different from proof specific to the offense charged. And that just doesn't exist here. So we don't believe that they have met that and by they, I mean the opponents of this information coming in, they don't, they have not met their burden of showing that this statement from Onfunk regarding Nichols telling on himself 
And and basically, Nick was trying to get help for himself. Like he needs, bro needs to pay for a lawyer. We did it for him. We don't believe. Hey, no, no, sir, Mr. Harvey, stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Mr. Harvey, Mr. Harvey, sit down. I am not going to have you interrupt court. You may object in just a moment. We will get to your objection in a moment. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. There has been no showing that this information is so substantially more prejudicial than probative that it should permit the exclusion of what we believe is obviously relevant evidence. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harvey, your objection. My objection is for lying to the court. You're making things up to the court and saying speculatively to the court that I assume like you paid for Mr. Nichols' lawyer. You got the evidence of that? I don't even understand that to be what she said. Okay, well, the record will reflect what she said, but I understood her to be talking about what was being said within the context of this conversation we just listened to. Your Honor, just go ahead, Ms. Harvey. I missed any reference to it. So, Wells, Wells is the person to whom this allegedly... I'm going to listen to it again. Offline, not in court. Your Honor, this is where I'm at with this. Just because the state says something is so doesn't make it so. I understand. And the state is saying, oh, well, this was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. This was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. The whole point of the hearsay rules, and I understand that the confrontation clause might not be implicated here, but the hearsay rules, the whole point of the hearsay rules is you get to see who's saying it, know what their basis is. You get to cross-examine them. They come to court, et cetera. And the problem here is the state is just sitting here saying, oh, well, clearly Mr. Umfunk did this to further the conspiracy. How do we know? How does she know? Maybe Umfunk, I'm not saying this is the case, but what if Umfunk was involved? Umfunk would have every reason to shift responsibility to other people. What about the next line in the hearsay ladder that we have? We don't know what people's motivations are. And just because the state says, well, their motivation was to do this or do that, she's not inside Umfunk's head. She's not inside Rel's head. So I reject their argument that they can just label things as hearsay exceptions and it makes it so. Well, I understand that. I take what everybody says as your argument in support of your position. I don't accept it as fact. It's an argument. I hear the counterargument. Sometimes I hear a lot more counterarguments back and forth after that. And then I make a determination about whether our evidence rules permit this particular evidence. The point of the hearsay rules and all of the evidence rules is so that to the extent the court can help it, only trustworthy information gets before the jury. And that's what we're trying to sort out here. So I understand that the stakes are high. I think that this might be a good time to break for the day. I will re-listen to this. Mr. Adkins, if you can find either the date that I can find the motion or the case law itself, just send that to Ms. Persfield. She'll send it on to me. Okay. So what you guys kept hearing was nested hearsay, right? That's double hearsay or hearsay within a hearsay. Now, y'all probably like, what the hell is that setting next? One, it's not supposed to be admitted unless it's an exception. The setting next. What the hell is it? All right, I got you. That's like me saying, yo, Johnny told me that James said. And on top of that, bruh, Judge, that's wrong. But what she did say, and I'll be fair, she's been doing this for everybody. She said, find me the case law to the state. So what she's essentially saying is, if y'all can't find it, we ain't going to pull it up because technically I'm not supposed to be using this stuff. And then the exception, the state has to find. Here's the biggest problem with that. Miss Love is a goddamn fucking liar. She knew good and damn well when, when, when Shannon said, I mean, when uh, Mr. Nichols said what? That was him saying, I didn't do it. Miss Love is trying to make it sound like everything that you didn't do, you're supposed to be on the camera and yell out, I didn't do that, man. Or on the phone yelling, I didn't do that, man. 
Or if you're in conversation, your phone being tapped. Like, I didn't do that, man. When he said what, that was it. Prime example. Let's say somebody said something like this. Hey, bruh. Or sis, whichever lady or male is watching this. Hey, look, Lil Red told me that Lil Blue said you stole his five dollars. And you say, what? Man, that nigga tripping, bro. He better stop saying that. You don't have to say you didn't do it. Nigga, stop lying on me. It's right there. So the, the fact of the matter is, Miss Love is acting like these cats are supposed to be lawyers and turning around and saying, hey, man, damn, what the hell? Don't do that. And it's like, bro, Miss Love, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. See, this isn't about justice at all. This is about conviction. And I'm going to keep on banging this drum because it sounds good to me. I think ultimately what's going to happen is, bro, the jury is going to say, it's so much crap going on around here, bro. They got to be guilty of something. Almost 700 witnesses we were supposed to hear with 300 plus coming in. Yeah, they got to be guilty of something. And for those, and I've seen it a couple of times, say, man, they just wasting all these dudes' money and all this stuff. No, they had to bat for it. They had to freaking bat for it. So I just want to sit here and ask y'all this question. You get where the state is coming from. The state basically would have something damn near secure saying, hey, 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 hey. he said we did this for bruh. We killed him for bruh. <laughs> Who is bruh? Now they got to figure that out. Or they'll paint an illustration that is supposed to be Young Thug. Like, hey, he supposed to get us a lawyer. We did this for bruh. That's a hell of a statement. That's a terrible statement. That statement right there could damn near be what I've been telling y'all that the state needed. The state needs a phone call like that, but per individual. So saying I did that for bruh ain't really nothing. And I'll give y'all a story real quick. I can recall one time that there was a dude who was talking trash about me. And when I'm in high school. I wasn't going to the school at the time because I was in continuation school. And dude hopped off the bus. He came to my neighborhood. He's not knowing there's five other people around my neighborhood. And he yelling out, yeah, man, I'm finna catch Teddy Nash and do him bad, do him bad. When he got off that bus, he got his ass whooped. I knew nothing about it until people told me afterwards. See what I'm saying? So let's say that all of this is true. How the hell do we know that bro was the one who told them to do that? See what I'm saying? So now we got to sit back and take the poison that is Miss Love's testimony to give this damn evidence in and literally go, hmm, Psst. yeah, that's, that's it right there. G F and Willikers, Johnny. So you got that bullshit running rapid. And I'm going to be fair. If I'm the state, hell yeah, I want this in. Hell yeah. That nails whoever bruh is, whoever they can pull it off. But also, it looks goddamn dumb on the state because if I'm Brian Steele or any of the YSL attorneys, I'm saying, well, if the state can pull this up, can't they figure out exactly, definitively, who bruh is? Now, they're going to say, well, because Young Thug is on Funk's brother, that that's who bruh is. But in the hood, bruh can be anybody. Buddy can be anybody. All of this stuff, anybody. So that's where you got a little bit of resolve right there because at the end of the day, you're not getting a name. And on top of that, we don't know if it's an ulterior motive for why Cuz dropped his name and said all that. And what do you mean did this for bread? They, he's not necessarily saying anything. They're not necessarily saying we killed for bread so he need to get us a lawyer. He's just saying we did that for bread. What is that? 
And I know, I know, I know, Seti Nash, bro. You know what, you know, you know what that mean, bro. Stop playing with the game. I get what y'all saying, bro. But the problem that I'm having is it's it's supposed to be beyond reasonable doubt. It's like me saying, hey, this person stabbed this person. How do I know? Because we got it on camera. But then they say, hey, that could be anybody. Gotcha. He stabbed him on camera, and we got the knife, and we got blood on his goddamn hands and blood on his shirt. It is no doubt that it was him. That's what we're essentially supposed to be looking for. But the state is going to say, you know what, based off of our inferences, which means what we're pointing to, but we ain't all the way been able to paint that illustration for you, that that right there is good enough. And that's going to be the shit show that we have to deal with once we get to closing arguments. Because if they're not able to convey what they need to, brother state will have produced a bullshit case and thrown enough shit across the wall that something will stick. Now, that's the only plus of this is that we're not hearing them say exactly young thug, but saying we did this for bro, he need to get us a lawyer is insane but even now nah, i'll say that for tomorrow's video because at the end of the day bro when we keep on hearing about all this lawyer talk you gotta look at it in the twofold you're talking about cats with no money and you're 100 percent talking about one of the biggest names in the city so can boosie be tied to rico's because he keeps saying Man, I put him on my lawyer, Drew Finley. Mine, Drew Finley, that nigga, mine. Mine, Drew Finley, Drew Finley, Drew Finley. Is that what we doing? Because that's what's being basically given to us is that because they got a hot name ass lawyer who's a big time lawyer, that I would want him. Like, bro, hey, hook me up with your lawyer. I do this all the time with my tax attorney. I put my tax attorney on a bunch of people. What does that mean? So, share to keep your people aware. Subscribe, turn that bell, stay notified. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know what y'all got out of that statement. I'd be curious. I know it's a little late, man. So, if you can hit the like button, see this at 4K likes, it'd be highly appreciated. We got something dropping in the morning, too. Or in the afternoon, 1 o'clock, East Coast time.